pastors, seminarians, and saints from all over the world who came to the seminar, testimony on the parables of the secrets of heaven and their true meanings. It is a pleasure to meet you. I am John Kona of the Philip tribe of the Shincheonji Church of Jesus, who is the host today. First of all, I would like to express my gratitude to everyone who came to the Shincheonji online seminar. Today, I hope that you will have a precious time of great grace and enlightenment when you receive the testimony of the open parables and their true meanings. Let us pray first and begin today's seminar. Holy Father God, who is full of love and grace, thank you for bringing together the hearts of the children of faith through the online seminar of Testimony on the Parables of the Secrets of Heaven and Their True Meanings, granted from heaven at this time today and for guiding us so that we can receive grace through the precious word and give glory to you, Father. Today, when all the prophecies of Jesus that were prophesied about 2,000 years ago are being fulfilled, you are pouring down the words of revelation in which the parables are open to all of our families of faith who hope for heaven. We give you thanks for granting us the eyes to see, the ears to hear, and a heart of wisdom to understand. Through this time, I pray that we will fully understand the secrets of the kingdom of heaven in the prophecies of the New Testament and engrave them in our hearts. May this become a truly blessed time. We all believe in the promise of God and Jesus and the hope of heaven and eternal life that will be fulfilled according to the word. Please allow this time to be a precious time for us to fully receive your grace and realize once again the purpose of God and the hope of our believers. In particular, please pour out the wisdom and power of heaven on the instructor who testifies to the word at this time and make it a precious time to give glory to you, the Father in heaven. We rely on you for everything from the beginning until the end, and we prayed all of this in the holy name of Jesus, who redeemed us from all of our sins. Amen. We would like to inform you that this online seminar is being conducted in strict compliance with the quarantine rules and social distancing. Now is the time to listen to the word of life. Today, we are going to listen to the introductory lesson 17, Figurative Living Creatures and Wind. We will have the instructor, Pe Hyoje of the Philip tribe, who will deliver the word. Hello to all pastors, seminarians, and saints around the world who have faith with the hope in heaven. It is nice to meet you. I am Pe Hyoje a center instructor who learned the word from the leader of the Philip tribe among the 12 tribes of Shincheonji. Our tribe leader has learned these words from the chairman of the Shincheonji church. Thank you very much for attending the Shincheonji online seminar today, the testimony on the parables of the secrets of heaven and their true meanings. Last time, you have heard about the seal, trumpet, and song. If you are a believer who hopes for heaven, you must be sealed with the truth in your heart and mind and be part of God's property. And also, you must become the children of heaven who hear the sound of the trumpet at the second coming, go to Mount Zion, the place of salvation, and sing the new song. Now, today's topic is the introductory lesson 17, The Figurative Living Creatures and Wind. First of all, in Revelation chapter 6 and 7, there are the contents about the living creatures and the wind that you will hear about today. In chapter 6, Jesus judges the chosen people through these four living creatures. And this judgment is described as a sun, moon, and stars in the sky being fallen because of the wind. Also, in Revelation chapter 7, there is an expression of holding back the wind 
and putting a seal on the people. I believe that these are important events that we must know as those who live in the time of the fulfillment of the book of Revelation. Our pastors, you must know this well, but I would appreciate it if you could go into the Bible together and listen to this one more time. First, let me tell you the answer to these parables. The figurative four living creatures represent the four archangels, and the figurative wind represents an angel and judgment. Therefore, to blow the wind means to judge through an angel. On the other hand, to hold back the wind would mean to stop the judgment that was passed through the angel. Then let's read the parable in Revelation chapter 4, verses 6 to 8 to understand why these answers came to be like this. Also before the throne, there was what looked like a sea of glass clear as crystal. In the center around the throne were four living creatures, and they were covered with eyes in front and in back. The first living creature was like a lion, and the second was like an ox. The third had a face like a man, and the fourth was like a flying eagle. Each of the four living creatures had six wings and was covered with eyes all around, even under his wings. Day and night, they never stopped saying, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was, and is, and is to come. Yes, you have read well. The book of Revelation is a prophecy written about 2,000 years ago by the Apostle John, a disciple of Jesus, after he had seen the future events in vision. Especially in Revelation chapter 4, John hears the voice of Jesus say, Come up here. And he goes up to the heaven in the spiritual realm to see the image and its organizational formation of the kingdom of heaven in the spiritual realm. Among the structure of the throne in the spiritual realm, the four living creatures are introduced that you will hear about today. But the appearance of the four living creatures is interesting. It is said to be like a lion, an ox, a man, and an eagle. And also, it is said that they are covered with eyes all around. It is as if it's like a zoo gathered together with animals. So why on earth are these animals in God's spiritual realm? These animals are not the real animals, but it is a parable figuratively spoken as these animals. Now, what is the true meaning and the actual entities of these four living creatures? Let's examine this together. First, in order to know the meaning of the figurative living creatures, we need to check the physical characteristics. When it comes to the physical living creatures, as mentioned earlier, they refer to living beings with life. For example, as you see, animals, plants, and even microorganisms that are too small to be seen with our eyes are collectively called as living creatures. In the Bible, there are two meanings for the living creatures. One is that of a physical living creature, and the other is that of a spiritual living creature borrowing the characteristics of the physical living creature. We'll find a few passages from the Bible with the figurative living creatures appearing in the books of prophecy. In the Bible, the image of these four living creatures were recorded in various places, and you can find the commonalities in these images. First of all, if we look at the words of Revelation chapters 4, verses 6 to 8, these four living creatures were like a lion, an ox, a man, and an eagle. This is what Apostle John saw in the spiritual realm of God, right? But everyone, the Old Testament prophet Ezekiel also saw and recorded the image of these four living creatures around the throne of God in the spiritual realm. When we go to Ezekiel chapter 1, Ezekiel sees the coming of the throne of God. 
And it was said that the appearance of the living creatures were like that of a lion, an ox, a man, and an eagle. This means that the appearance of the four living creatures that the Apostle John saw approximately 2,000 years ago and the four living creatures of the spiritual realm that Ezekiel saw approximately 2,600 years ago are the same. They are what's called as the four cherubim in Ezekiel chapter 10, and their appearance was like that of a lion, a cherub, a man, and an eagle. From this, we can see that the four living creatures and the four cherubim are the same beings, only used in different expressions. Likewise, there are a few other parts that refer to the same entities with just some different expressions. Let's read Revelation chapter 6, verses 1 to 2 together. I watched as the Lamb opened the first of the seven seals. Then I heard one of the four living creatures say, in a voice like thunder, Come. I looked, and there before me was a white horse. Its rider held a bow, and he was given a crown, and he rode out as a conqueror bent on conquest. In Revelation chapter 6, you can see when one of the four living creatures gave a command, Come! The white horse and its rider came out in response to the command. If you only looked at the appearance of the four living creatures, this time you can see the four living creatures in the position of giving orders. In Revelation chapter 6, not only the white horse, but also the red, black, and pale horses also appear. Horses of different colors appear under the orders of the four living creatures. These horses in Revelation chapter 6, everyone, can also be found in Zechariah of the Old Testament. If we look at Zechariah chapter 6, verses 1 to 3, it says, Four chariots came out from between two mountains. There are mountains of bronze. Now the first chariot had red horses, the second, black, the third, white, and the fourth, dappled, all of them powerful. Oh? Isn't it the same as the horses we saw in Revelation chapter 6? That's correct. We can see that the horses of Revelation chapter 6 and those of Zechariah chapter 6 are the same horses after all. However, in Revelation chapter 6, these horses carry the command of the four living creatures, and in Zechariah chapter 6, there are four chariots. It can be seen that the four living creatures and the four chariots are the same entities as they govern and rule the horses. However, if we go to Zechariah chapter 6, verses 4 to 5, Zechariah asks a question to an angel about the four chariots that he had seen earlier. The angel's answer at that time is that these are the four angels of heaven, which according to the footnote, refers to the four winds. Now, there are too many words, right? But in the end, the four living creatures, the four cherubim, the four chariots and four winds, despite the different expressions, they are the same in the end. And seeing that the four living creatures give orders and rule, they are seen as those who can rule over something within God's organization of the spiritual realm in heaven. And, if you look at the words of Hebrews chapter 1 verse 7, it is said that He makes the angels winds. This would mean that God's messengers, in other words, angels, are deemed or called as the winds. Therefore, when these countless angels are referred to as winds, and there are four winds that are counted specifically, it means that these are the four archangels who are in charge of these other angels. And the fact that the faces of the four living creatures look like that of a lion, an ox, a man, and an eagle means that they have different duties. 
Each face has a symbolic meaning. The lion, the so-called king of the jungle, has a role of judging people who are like beasts who do not understand the word. And the ox, which plows the fields, represents the role of plowing the hearts of the people and uprooting the weeds, just like the ox that plows the field. And the reason that one is like a man is that the man is a supreme creature amongst all creation because the man has thoughts and perception and is able to judge and discern between truth and falsehood. And finally, the parable of the eagle, the king of the birds, means that the spirits that are compared to the birds are judged. From this, we can see that the four archangels, who are compared to as the four animals, have the power to judge, the authority to judge. So if we go to Revelation chapter 6, there is an event in which Jesus judges the chosen people who betrayed by using the four living creatures, and they are judged with such authority. Looking at Revelation chapter 4 verse 8, Didn't it say that the four living creatures were covered with eyes? In Revelation chapter 5 verse 6, it is said that the eyes are the spirits. Therefore, being covered with the eyes means that the four archangels lead the many heavenly hosts, the angels, ministering to God and standing before God. This is the representation of the spiritual organization. So in summary, the figurative four living creatures represents the four archangels who are the commanders of the heavenly armies, that is, the commander of the angels. They are also expressed as the four cherubim, the four chariots, and the four winds. They refer to the four archangels, all of which have different expressions, but ultimately are the same. And the figurative wind represents an angel. It is also expressed as a chariot, an eye, or a horse. These are different expressions, but they have the same meaning in the end. And you may find this unfamiliar, but expressions like seraph and cherub, they also refer to an angel. But why was an angel expressed as a wind, a chariot, or a horse to make it difficult. First, about calling an angel a chariot. Chariots are like wagons that are used in battle. There are verses that God called these angels the heavenly hosts, which refers to heavenly soldiers. Through Psalms 103, verse 21, and Psalm 68, verse 17, the angels of God are compared to the army of heaven and the chariots of God to the angels of God who guard the sanctuary of God. And when the angels are also called as horses, it is because just as there is a person who rules and leads the horses, the army of angels in heaven preparing for battle under the command of the four living creatures are compared to as these horses. Lastly, when the angels are called as the winds, the wind is invisible to our eyes. But there are numerous phenomena that occur through the actions of the winds. Likewise, the angels are invisible to our eyes, but they accomplish God's will in numerous ways. Not only that, the angels are compared to as lightning, rumblings, and thunder, because they say that they move as fast as lightning. Through the contents of Ezekiel chapter 1 verse 14, Revelation chapter 4 verse 5, and Revelation chapter 11 verse 19, we can see the activity of these angels being referred to as winds, lightning, rumbling, and thunder. Even at this time, the angels are invisible to our eyes, 
But they must be very busy to accomplish God's will, right? Now, let's read Daniel chapter 7, verses 2 to 3, the parable related to the movement of these angels. Daniel said, In my vision at night I looked, and there before me were the four winds of heaven churning up the great sea. Four great beasts, each different from the others, came up out of the sea. Yes, you have read well. If you read Daniel chapter 7, verses 2 to 3, the four winds churn up the sea, and at that time four great beasts come out of the sea. Everyone, it can be common for the winds to blow at the sea, but it is really strange to say that four beasts come out of the sea because of this wind, right? There is always wind when we go to the sea, then why have we never seen these kind of four beasts before? Even the appearance of these four beasts is expressed to be like a leopard, a bear, a lion, and a fearsome beast with iron teeth. And if you count their heads and horns, it is a beast with seven heads and ten horns. And they are said to do the work of tormenting God's people in the future. Isn't it really scary just thinking about it? The parable you read is a prophecy within the book of Daniel, which are the events that will be fulfilled in the future as seen in the vision. The content that was seen recorded in this book of prophecy is a content that is hidden in parables. What does it mean that the four winds that brought the four great beasts out of the sea referring to? Let's look at the meaning of this wind that is blowing through the Bible. First, there is an actual wind, a physical wind, and there is a spiritual wind. If you understand the physical characteristics of wind, you can understand the spiritual meaning of these words much easier. The wind is invisible, but it clearly does exist. And scientifically, it refers to the movement of air caused by changes in atmospheric pressure. However, depending on the strength of the wind, it can be beneficial to us like a breeze, but sometimes it can also cause a lot of damage like a hurricane or a typhoon. If you go to the book of Revelation, there is the content in which the wind blows and then it stops. What is the meaning of this spiritual wind which borrows from the physical characteristics of an actual wind? In Revelation chapter 6, a great wind, a strong wind blows. And in chapter 7, the wind is held back and then released again. This is closely related to the appointed tasks of the archangels and the angels that you have heard about earlier. The Bible not only records the stories of people, but it also records the stories of the invisible spirits in the heavenly, in the spiritual realm. Next, let's take a look at what the angels who are compared to the living creatures and the winds actually do. If you look at the promised event at the time of the fulfillment of the book of Revelation, first, the seven stars and seven messengers who work as a lamp to prepare the way would appear. And the location of that event is the tabernacle of the seven golden lampstands in Revelation chapters 2 and 3, that is a tabernacle of heaven in Revelation chapter 13. Here, the chosen people had forsaken their first love with Jesus and became one with Satan's group, and they committed the act of betrayal. Jesus wrote a letter to them asking them to repent, but they did not repent. Then, what would be the outcome of these chosen people who had betrayed? 
In Revelation chapter 6, when Jesus opens the seven seals of the book one by one, He judges the chosen people who had betrayed through the four living creatures. These people are judged through the bow, sword, scales, and the beasts of the earth. The bow, sword, and scales represent the word of judgment, and the beasts of the earth are the destroyers belonging to Satan that are used in bringing about this judgment. This is the same as the content of Daniel chapter 7, which we had looked at earlier. It is said that four winds churn up the sea and bring up these four great beasts, right? And didn't it say that the four great beasts torment God's people? This is similar to the content of the four winds using the four great beasts and judging the people of God who had betrayed. Now let's read Revelation chapter 6 verses 12 to 13 to see what will happen with this judgment. I watched as he opened the sixth seal. There was a great earthquake. The sun turned black like sackcloth, made of goat hair. The whole moon turned blood red. And the stars in the sky fell to the earth as late figs drop from a fig tree when shaken by a strong wind. In Revelation chapter 6, the sun, moon, and stars are said to fall to the earth. The sun turns black like sackcloth made of goat hair. The whole moon turns blood red, and the stars in the sky fall to the earth as late figs drop from a fig tree when shaken by a strong wind. To fall to the ground means that they no longer belong to heaven, but they belong to the earth. In Revelation chapter 6, the four living creatures are called as the four winds. The fact that the fruits of the trees fell by a strong wind means that there was a strong wind that was blowing and that there was judgment through these four living creatures. It is like the winnowing grain, the light chaff is blown away by the wind, and the grains are collected. This is how the grain and the chaff are separated. Likewise, making the wind blow means that the chosen people who betrayed are judged through the four living creatures and the angels. The judgment of the chosen people who betrayed was also prophesied in Matthew chapter 24, verse 29, saying that the sun, moon, and stars would be darkened and that they would fall. And in Revelation chapter 13, a beast with seven heads and ten horns comes up from the sea and marks God's chosen people with the mark of the beast and destroys the chosen people who had betrayed. This is the same incident that is written in Revelation chapter 6. And in Matthew chapter 24, which records the events of the second coming of the Lord, Jesus spoke of these events as a war between nations and between kingdoms. He was talking about the event in which the kingdom and the nation of God had sinned and were destroyed and judged by the kingdom and the nation of Satan. But why doesn't the world today know about this great event? There was a spiritual warfare in which a destroyer had stood in the holy place and the sun, moon, and stars had darkened and fallen. But why do they not know? If the war in Matthew chapter 24 and Revelation were a physical war, then all the people of the world would be interested in it. However, because this is a spiritual war between the kingdom and nation that belongs to God and the kingdom and nation that belongs to the devil, that is, an invisible spiritual war that is fought through doctrines, the people are not interested because it has nothing to do with them. With this in mind, Jesus was saying that the second coming today 
will be just like the days of Noah. And just as people were eating, drinking, marrying, and giving into marriage until the day that Noah had entered the ark, they did not understand the work of God. And today, all the events of Matthew chapter 24, Revelation chapter 6, and chapter 13 have all been fulfilled. And the prophecies and its realities are clearly testified in Shinchenji. However, many people in the world do not even try to know these things and still think that it has nothing to do with them. And so the Bible testifies that this this current situation is the same as the time of Noah. So I hope that you listen to the testimony and become the true believers who realize that the promises of Jesus are being fulfilled today. Now, after judging the chosen people of the tabernacle of heaven that betrayed, God holds back the winds of judgment. The wind of judgment that was blowing in chapter 6 is held back in chapter 7, and it is stopped from blowing for a while. Let's read Revelation chapter 7, verses 1 to 4. After this, I saw four angels standing at the four corners of the earth, holding back the four winds of the earth to prevent any wind from blowing on the land or on the sea or on any tree. Then I saw another angel coming up from the east, having the seal of the living God. He called out in a loud voice to the four angels who had been given power to harm the land and the sea. Do not harm the land or the sea or the trees until we put a seal on the foreheads of the servants of our God. Then I heard the number of those who were sealed, 144,000 from all the tribes of Israel. Yes, you read well. In Revelation chapter 7 verse 1, it says, After this. This phrase, after this, denotes after a certain event, indicating the before and after an event. In other words, Revelation chapter 7 speaks of what happened after the sun, moon, and stars of the first heaven had darkened and fallen due to the judgment of the tabernacle of heaven in Revelation chapter 6. Here it is said that the four angels hold back the four winds of the earth and prevent them from blowing on the land, on the sea, or on any tree. What does it mean to hold back the winds here? Since it is said to hold back the winds, it should have the opposite meaning from blowing the wind that we had seen earlier, right? It means that the judgment through the four living creatures will cease because the judgment in which the wind had blown onto the tabernacle that had betrayed has come to an end. Why then does God have to hold back the winds and prevent it from blowing? In Revelation chapter 7, verses 3 and 4, there is the event of sealing onto the foreheads of the servants of God the 144,000 of the 12 tribes, and they are sealed with the seal of God. As we saw earlier, after the judgment of the tabernacle of heaven, the wind is held back in order to seal 12,000 people from each tribe, the 144,000 people from the 12 tribes. This means that the judgment has been paused for a while. We looked at the seal in the last lesson, right? Sealing means to write the word of revelation in one's heart and one's mind, just as you would engrave your name on a seal. This means that the wind of judgment will not blow on the land or the sea or on any tree until the 144,000 are sealed. 
Here, the land refers to the saints of the tabernacle that had betrayed. The sea is the world, and the various trees are the members of each denomination. As for the tabernacle, as we have seen several times before, the judgment has already been completed, and the wind has not blown against the sea, the world. However, since it is said that this wind is held back only until the 144,000 are sealed, we can see that it will blow again when this specified number is filled. Then who are the sealed 144,000 of the 12 tribes here? In Revelation chapter 14, Jesus the Lamb is on Mount Zion, and 144,000 people are together with Him. They are called as the first fruits, and so it refers to those who have been harvested. Also, according to Matthew chapter 24, when the spiritual night comes, when the sun, moon, and stars are darkened and fallen, it says that Jesus sounds a trumpet with the angels and gathers the elect. Today, when Matthew chapter 24 is fulfilled as promised, when the promised pastor becomes the spiritual trumpet and blows the trumpet of salvation, those who hear the sound of the trumpet and gather from all directions, from one end of the earth to the other, will be part of the 144,000. And by engraving the word of God into their hearts and into their minds, they become the new priests and the new pastors in the new kingdom that God creates when the book of Revelation is fulfilled. Likewise, this is Mount Zion, where the 12 tribes that have been harvested and sealed in this way are located. The temple of the tabernacle of the testimony, where the one who overcomes is, and this is the new heaven, new earth. What will happen when the work of sealing the 144,000 is finished here on Mount Zion? Let's read Revelation chapter 7, verse 9. After this, I looked, and there before me was a great multitude that no one could count, from every nation, tribe, people, and language, standing before the throne and in front of the Lamb. They were wearing white robes and were holding palm branches in their hands. Yes, you read well. It is written that after this, there is a great multitude that no one could count from every nation, tribe, people, and language, and they come before the throne of God and to the Lamb. Here, the after this refers to the time after the 144,000 of the 12 tribes are sealed. It was said that the wind would be held back until the 144,000 are sealed. But now that the sealing is complete, what will happen to the wind? Yes, it will blow again. This is called the Great Tribulation in Revelation chapter 7, verse 14. Out of this great tribulation, people from every nation, tribe, people, and language come out saying that this is a true word of Jesus, and this is indeed the word of truth. So what does the white robe that is worn by those who come out refer to? In Revelation chapter 7, verse 14, it says that they washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. The clothes or the robes here refer to the clothes of our hearts, not the physical robes. Therefore, of course, the blood in which the clothes are washed in is not actual blood, right? Our hearts can be washed pure and white only by the blood of Jesus. That is why we say that white clothes 
refers to the heart that is washed with the blood of Jesus and the righteous deeds. In John chapter 15, verse 3, Jesus says that you are already clean because of the word that I have spoken to you. Therefore, only the word of Jesus is what is used to cleanse away the sins and filthiness. And only then will we become holy without sin and qualify as a people of heaven who can live together with God and Jesus. Since they were washed with the blood of Jesus, the multitude in white can be called as a people of God's kingdom who receive the atonement of sins. It is said that this uncountable multitude in white will gather before the throne of God and of the Lamb. And if you go to Revelation chapter 14, it says, There before me was a Lamb standing on Mount Zion, and with him 144,000. This is what it says, right? Then since Jesus is on Mount Zion, and the 144,000 established as the 12 tribes in Revelation chapter 7 are there, we can see that the place in front of the throne of God and of the Lamb, where the multitude in white gathers to, is the place where the 144,000 of the 12 tribes are located. So now, the 12 tribes of Shincheonji are testifying to the word of revelation all around the world through this seminar that you are listening to. And countless people who have heard and realized to understand this word are coming together. This is the great work that is being accomplished. And so now, let us summarize what we have shared today. First, the figurative winds are angels and judgment. The wind blowing means that the judgment is being passed through the angels. And holding back the wind would mean that the judgment that is given through the angels is being stopped. And so now, let us summarize. In conclusion, everything that we have seen today. The figurative living creatures refer to the four archangels, and the figurative wind refers to the angel and judgment. Therefore, when it comes to the winds blowing, it means that judgment is taking place through the angel, and when the wind is held back, it means that the judgment through the angel is stopped. This is a secret of heaven that had been hidden in parables to this day. And only by understanding this can we go to heaven. The reason why Shincheonji can clearly testify to these parables as Jesus had promised is because what he has spoken in parables has been fulfilled in reality. In the fulfillment of Revelation, there are times when the wind blows and there is a time when it is held back from blowing. And it is said that when the wind blows again, it will be a time of great tribulation, and out of the tribulation will be a countless multitude in white that will gather. As recorded in the Bible, the gospel of the fulfilled reality is being preached to many people, and a great multitude in white will come out to Mount Zion, where God and Jesus are. I hope that all the saints who are listening to this seminar will also hear and understand the words of the parables of the secrets of the kingdom of heaven. Find the pastor and the temple whom God and Jesus are together with and become one in order to avoid judgment and be saved from the tribulation. The next lesson will be about the figurative death and resurrection. I hope that you will listen carefully to the next lesson as well, realize the secrets of the kingdom of heaven, and become the people of heaven who are recognized by God. Finally, we are one in God and in Jesus. There is one God, there is one Jesus, and there is one Bible that we are reading. I hope that the whole global village will become one in the opened word of truth 
and that we can achieve a world of peace as soon as possible. We are one. Let us pray. Father God, the Creator, whom we are truly grateful to, we give our sincere gratitude to you for guiding all of the beloved saints and pastors to the Shincheonji Online Seminar and for governing all of us today at this time. Father God, we have examined the figurative living creatures and wind today. We sincerely thank you for allowing us the secrets of the kingdom of heaven that were hidden in the Bible and for allowing us to understand even the true meanings through these wonderful revealed words. We believe that if we are the believers who hope for heaven and salvation, that we must understand the words of this revelation that are being clearly testified. Please open the door to each person's heart and grant each person a heart to understand, the eyes to see, and the ears to hear. Please help them to be able to listen well to the remaining introductory lessons as well. And please command the thousands upon thousands of mighty angels and send them to all of our beloved pastors so that this precious word of blessing can be well preached to all the saints who are nurtured by the pastors as well. We ask that you protect and be with everyone so that everyone may be physically and spiritually well so that we can gather to the remaining sessions. And all these words we pray in the name of our Savior Jesus Christ who has led us from death into life. Amen. Thank you for listening to the very end. The figurative death refers to a condition of not having the word of life. It means to come out of an organization of falsehood, which is like a spiritual tomb, by listening to the word of life, which is like the breath of life. I will explain in detail why such an answer came out through the Bible. Next time, you will receive the testimony on the topic of Introductory Lesson 18, The Figurative Death and Resurrection. I hope you attend and come to understand the secrets of heaven hidden in the parables of death and resurrection. In addition to the message you heard today, if you have any questions about the Shincheonji Church and the Word, please contact the representative number for each region you see on the screen. We will guide you in detail. Then, we will conclude today's program by offering the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us of our sins, as we have forgiven those who sinned against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. This concludes the seminar, Testimony on the Parables of the Secrets of Heaven and Their True Meanings. Thank you everyone for being here with us.